Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at uh, the GitHub, some of the GitHub actions, in particularly for SharePoint framework projects. Uh, so the, this the the demo will be a, a combination of presentation uh, first and then uh, some demo in the end. Uh, before starting, I would like to thank the Office 365 CLI team, in particular Valen, Gary, and Waldek, uh, with with all the help and input they provided um, uh, during during the development. Right. Uh, so my name is Zanu Tati, and I'm a SharePoint developer at Content and Code. There's my Twitter and uh, blog if you'd like to. Uh, follow. So, what are GitHub Actions? So, you know, till last year on GitHub, we could only host the code uh, and share it with our fellow developers or fellow community members. We didn't have the ability to run the code on GitHub. Uh, last year, GitHub introduced something called as GitHub Actions, with which now uh, we can we can run the code on GitHub. How cool is that? So uh, we will be looking at those uh, GitHub Actions today, but to understand GitHub Actions, uh, you know, we need to understand uh, what a GitHub workflow is. So a GitHub workflow, like any other workflow, is a set of tasks that, that get executed when an event happens in GitHub. Uh, so for example, uh, when you push a file onto a repository, um, uh, you might want to build the code, uh, test the code, uh, deploy it, and then send an email to someone saying that it has been deployed or send, say, 200 emails to, to the favorite person in your organization. You shouldn't do that, but yeah. Uh, so you can, uh, you know, basically run a workflow in GitHub. So let's, let's briefly look at this uh, workflow structure. Uh, so th there are different elements in a workflow. Uh, so the f first one is, uh, you know, we, we start with the um, with the event. So that's the, um, you know, whenever you push some code to the GitHub repo or you create a pull request or you open an issue, that, that's when the, uh, the workflow triggers. And after that, uh, you know, uh, you decide on a host machine, whether it's a Windows, Linux, or a Mac machine. Uh, this is because, you know, if you want to build the code uh, that you have just pushed or deployed, the code, then we want it to run somewhere, right? So that's where uh, you know we decide on what host machine uh, we want to use, uh, uh, and then uh, there are a set of tasks that that you can uh, keep running. So uh, a task in a workflow might be, say, a line of code uh, just to print something, or several lines of code. Uh, you can write these in a in a GitHub workflow now. If the task is a common one, say like uh, building the code or deploying the code, then someone would have already written the code for you. So all you can do is just consume that code uh, in 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 your workflow. So someone would have hosted the code in GitHub somewhere else, and all we can do in our workflow is just consume that code rather than writing the code ourselves. And this this code that is hosted somewhere else, written by our fellow developers, are called as GitHub Actions. So in, in our workflow, instead of writing the whole code ourselves, we just start consuming these uh, pieces of code, and these are called as GitHub Actions. And we will see uh, you know, the, the structure of the workflow, which is a YAML file very soon. Uh, but yeah, before that, I just wanted to show you what it is exactly. Now, just a word on the events that, that trigger a GitHub workflow. So this event can be anything like a, a push or a pull request on a particular branch, uh, when an issue is opened, a label is created, deleted, uh, so many events. You just name them, GitHub have uh, you know, triggers for all those events. And regarding the the VMs or the or the host machine where these uh, workflows run, they're all uh, hosted by GitHub. And uh, you know, if you think uh, the, these are all open source, and if you think there is any software that is missing on the VM, you can submit a pull request. Someone from the GitHub team will review that, and if okay, they'll accept the pull request. So. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. Now, uh, how do we create a workflow uh, in uh, in GitHub repository? So, if you have a repository in GitHub, all you have to do is just click on the the actions tab that I've highlighted over here, and then click. Uh, you get a button called uh, Set up workflow yourself. Uh, so that will automatically create a YAML file for you. And once you save that, that's it. You have created a workflow. Uh, it's it's that simple. So what I've done here is I've just uh, uh, highlighted a, a, a simple workflow, and all that workflow does is just prints hello world. So if you if you see that I am saying on on the push event, use the Windows latest uh, machine, and then uh, just write a script to say hello world. 
of course, we have to write hello world because this is our first workflow. And when we push some uh, a file onto this repository, what we get is a nice execution, and then uh, the workflow runs and prints hello world on the console. Now, if we have a SPFX project hosted in uh, GitHub, we don't want to just print hello world when someone pushes a file, which we want to, you know, uh, build the code, uh, run some test cases, deploy the code, uh, and then maybe send an email. So for that, we can make use of Office 365 CLI. And uh, to explain Office 365 CLI, um, I'll pass it on to Velin. Okay, I'll just pop up for two minutes. I won't even share the screen. Maybe Anoop, you can uh, open the official site. So the Office 365 CLI is just a command line interface, similar to PMP PowerShell, that you can execute commands in uh, IT pros or DevOps guys or administrators. They can manage their tenants. They can also out run automated scripts or they can use the CLI into uh, an automated pipelines, what we'll end up going to, to show. Another nice piece of functionality is that you can upgrade SPFX projects with the CLI, and you can run uh, multiple reports and, and pull data, reporting data out of Office 265. Um, maybe if you can go to the examples or just scroll down a little bit to show how easy it is to install. So the CLI can be installed with the, that single command it runs on all operating systems. That means that you can run on Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, whatever you decide. And if you can go on the examples, just to show uh, very quickly how uh, the syntax looks, it's examples there. Um, just open one of those, open the, the last one, uh, lists activate SharePoint. So you can see that syntax here, we have a variable in PowerShell and uh, after that variable, it's the uh, CLI command, and the CLI command pretty much looks like Azure CLI or NPM or Git, if you're familiar with those syntaxes. But once you run that command, it's collecting uh, data from Office 365, and then we're outputting that data in a, a typical uh, PowerShell manner down below. So it's briefly how to, to catch on the syntax and, and, and this is pretty much from my side. Now, Anoop will show how we can use the CLI in an automated pipeline and, and progress and move uh, SPFX package all the way to production. Maybe and you can just move on, yeah. I, yeah, thank you, Alan. So as, as Alan explained, what we have done is we have created some GitHub actions using Office 365 CLI that we can consume in our workflows, uh, in, a, in our GitHub workflows for SharePoint framework projects. So the first action is, is a login action. So uh, what this does is um, it logs you in into the Office uh, in, into your tenant using CLI. Uh, we have to pass in the admin username and password. Uh, now these are stored in something called a secrets in, in in a GitHub repo, secrets are, secrets are something which you create once and then you cannot edit them uh, or no one can view them except the actions. All you can do is just delete them. So uh, they, they are very, very secret. So, uh, and the, the next action is uh, deploy app action. So what this does is it uh, deploys the uh, SPPKG file onto your tenant. Uh, so b before running this action, we would have run a, a gulp package uh, ship and that would have uh, created I created a file uh, in the um, in the SharePoint uh, uh, slash solution folder, and that's what we will be using um, uh, to uh, to deploy. So we we pass the path of that, and we're with a couple of other attributes, and then that that takes care of deploying the SPPKG file onto your tenant. And finally, we have a generic action called as run script. To this uh, this action, uh, you know you can execute any Office 365 CLS script. So in this case, you know, I've shown an example on of how, how you can send an email. So just to quickly explain the workflow that I'll be showing next. Uh, so we'll be using something, uh, a CI CD workflow in which, uh, you know, on, on push, uh, we will use the host machine as Linux, and then we will uh, do uh, the, the basic things that we do for all SPFX projects, which is npm install, gulp bundle, and 
SQL package solution. And after that, uh, we will use the CLI login, deploy, and the run script actions. So basically, these actions that I just explained are hosted in the PNP repository on GitHub. So we'll be consuming those in our workflow as tasks. Just just to, to uh, say in our word, they are also available in the GitHub actions uh, where, um, store. The marketplace. Yes, yeah. marketplace, sorry. Yeah, thank you. So before moving on to the demo, uh, here are some of the helpful resources which will be pasted in the chat window. And yeah, uh, so you can take a look at this for, for all the helpful information. Right, uh, so that's a lot of slides. Let's uh, move on to the uh, to the demo. So over here, I have a GitHub, uh, a GitHub repository with a, a basic SharePoint framework web part. Uh, so what, uh, what we have done here is uh, set up a, uh, workflow and as you can see um, in the workflow I have said uh, on push uh, use the Ubuntu uh, latest machine uh, and then use the uh, node 10.x version after that uh, the tasks are to uh, install the dependencies using npm ci which is the uh, command specifically designed for continuous integration and then we do a gulp bundle and gulp package solution this will create the the spkg file in sharepoint slash solution and then we log in uh, to the tenant using the cli login action then we deploy the and deploy the package onto our tenant and finally uh, we, ru we run a script which will just send an email to uh, to say that the deployment is complete so let's go ahead and quickly change the file so i'll go to source uh, part that one uh, of course you you'll be you know using an editor uh, to to change the file but for this demo i'll just uh, use github itself uh, come with those changes. So this means I have now pushed a file into the repository, and when I click on actions, I should see the the workflow uh, uh, that has kicked off. So there is one job, which is to build and deploy, and then you click on that. It uh, gives you a nice inter user interface of uh, 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 how things progress. So as you can see, the actions that I uh, the uh, the steps that I just explained. So we are using Node Node.js 10.x, and then we are doing the npm ci, which installs all the dependencies. Uh, this take about uh, 25 to 30 seconds. Um, so again, depending upon the host machine, it varies. So if it's uh, uh, Windows, it might uh, uh, it takes uh, slightly longer or slightly less. So it it all depends on on the host machine that you choose. And then uh, after the dependencies are installed, we are doing a gulp bundle and a package solution. So these are the common tasks that we do with, uh, with the SharePoint framework project. And then we do uh, run the Office 365 CLI login. So as part of this command, we are installing Office 365 CLI as well. So uh, this is because on the host machine, Office 365 CLI is not pre-installed. So the login command takes care of that. And since CLI is uh, installed, uh, the next command, which is deploy, recognizes uh, the script and deploys the uh, the app, and finally, uh, you know, we send an email uh, saying that the deployment was complete. The whole workflow took one minute and twelve seconds. So if I just come over here and uh, refresh the uh, my app catalog, you can see that the uh, the package was deployed just a few minutes back. And if I just quickly open my email, I should have received an email saying uh, the deployment is is done. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, that's GitHub Actions for you. Uh, so uh, hopefully you like the demo. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Yeah, how, how to get started? Just can you open the marketplace and, and just show uh, everyone where they can find those actions? Because um, um, this is important. Like uh -huh. once you go on, uh, you can just type GitHub Actions Marketplace in Google. Oh, and okay. Right, yeah. And then if you type, there is a search box here, and if you type Office 365 uh, CLI, you'll find those actions. This is basically your starting point because 
here are the three actions and uh, every action has a nice explanation in it. Uh, the run script and deploy are dependent on login. So login will always be present in your uh, flow and the, the, the other one will be on uh, depending on your need. But this is where like a starting point where you can go search for those and just install them in your pipelines. Thanks, Anup. All right, thank you very much. Excellent, thank you, Anup. Thank you, Velin. Super, super, super helpful um, for everybody who's automating things in a GitHub.